Welcome again. Welcome to the mobile startup competition. So that's going to be the second batch of uh, companies. We'll show you the, the five companies, the next ones. Oh, we're missing the PowerPoint, so no <laughs> problem at all. OK, here so, so here are. Uh, as you know, we have, uh, we look at 10 different companies. Now it's time to, uh, to see Ion Eyewise. Ion is a prescription aid glasses that interacts with mobile devices. Then LightMap, which is the smart motorcycle helmet that allows you to be connected uh, while you're driving your motorcycle. Then we'll have Keep, Keep, organizer and sharing tool, Internet of Things. The fourth one is Recommend, which provides customized advice uh, online. OK, and the last one, but not the least one, is Stereo.io, educational tool for Africa using SMS. That's going to be the, five, uh, the second uh, batch of five companies. Then don't forget to apply to this competition. That's uh, just for you, so the people that uh, are here in this, in this space. If you have an idea, any cool idea that can be converted to an app, so apply here, testabit.com slash four years from now. And then tomorrow, you can give your, uh, they can give you the real app that you're thinking now. Now it's time to welcome the judges. So the first judge that we have here is Diane Eisner, Vice President of Waze. <laughs> Thank you, Diane. The second one is Paul Navarro, is the Head of Innovation at Bank de Sabadell. Thank you, Paul. The third one is John Mayol, is the Co-Founder of General Partners at Blue Run Ventures. Thank you, John. Uh, Fariba Resvani, she's the chairman of the Sister City, the San Francisco Barcelona Sister City Committee. Welcome, Fariba. The last one is Tomas Diago. He's the CEO and co-founder of Softonic. Thank you. And let's also not forget that we have a front row full of judges as well who will be voting uh, for the first, second, and third prize after today's session. And also a reminder, uh, teams have three minutes for their pitch and three minutes for questions and answers from uh, both panel of judges. OK, thank you. So it's time for Ion Airways. Ricardo, please. <laughs> thank you. We are Ion Eyewear. We are a company specialized in wearable devices for people, not for cyborgs. And we create Wion glasses that are uh, very uh, a product that is specialized in, uh, in wearable, is one wearable device, is one glasses. The functions are, uh, four main functions have the glasses. The first are notifications. We have one LED light inside the right arm of the frame. And this LED light has, uh, you can receive emails, WhatsApps, uh, social updates in, uh, if you configure the app. The second function of, your, of our glasses are, we have two buttons in, in, uh, at the uh, right, right arm. With these buttons, you can control the music, put the volume up or down, change the song. You can also, uh, can, uh, it's possible make, uh, take pictures with the, uh, with the glasses. And we have one radar, one radar function. If you lose your glasses, it's possible find the glasses with our, uh, our app. And the glasses have one radar function to find the glasses. We are working to make uh, our glasses uh, friendly to developers. And we create one uh, software to, to create uh, more functions for the future. But that, that, that's the, uh, the functions now. OK, I want to talk just a little bit about uh, what we believe is our competitive advantage. Uh, in fact, we, went, we, we, don't, we don't want to compete with the smart glasses. We want to compete with the rest of the frames uh, that you can find in the market. So when you enter in an optician store and you have to wear uh, glasses always because you have uh, precision glasses, uh, you can choose uh, either buying a Ray-Ban or any other glass that you can find or uh, wear the Guion glasses. 
In fact, we will have at least the same design because our glasses are going to be produced by a top French glasses manufacturer with luxury brands like Philippe Stark or uh, Cartier. Uh, the cost will be more or less the same because we will be between 100 and 150 euros and we also have the micro technology that will allow all these functions. Something important also is, although we are not going to talk about our business plan, obviously, uh, we are going to give some clues about our basis of our business plan. One is that we want to distribute primarily through the optician sector. We want to be the sexiest uh, device or item in an optician shop. We have a team uh, which is very well experienced in uh, technology. Uh, Santiago is an awarded uh, inventor. Uh, um, we, we have also experience in the optician sector because uh, I have uh, a successful business there and we also have uh, good designers like the uh, successful uh, Japanese designer Mac Funamitsu. And we have pre-agreements with distributors in the United States and the European Union. Thanks for the presentation. Uh, I have a w one question. If I was a consumer uh, entering in, a, in an optician a shop, uh, how would you sell me the, the glasses? What would be the advantages? Why should I choose these glasses over the standard ones? Uh, well, you will find the, the, the glasses within the optician store. Uh, probably will be the only strange thing that you will find in an optician store because the rest of the uh, frames will be very, very normal. And the person that is attending the, the optician store, the, 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 the typical optician that you will find there, will be the one that probably will be very, very keen to show you because it's the, the special thing that they have. What are the special things that it has? Well, yeah, what are the special things that it has, the, the glasses? The, what are the benefits for, for me? What are the benefits that I, I will have if I buy those glasses? Yes, the benefit is that uh, you will be able to interact with your mobile, to receive notifications, to use them as a, as a remote control, uh, to avoid to losing the glasses or, the, or to losing your smartphone, for all these things. The price is the same like the normal glasses, and, but the normal glasses doesn't have technology inside, but Yes. The design is the same, the shape is the same. Yes, and also, uh, as uh, Santiago has explained, uh, we have an open SDK so that uh, there are many, many apps in the market, interesting for people, uh, that we, you, you will be able to receive through the glasses, in health, in fitness, etc., etc. Okay, there's a question from the judges over there. Problem? Excuse me. Dick? How did you solve the battery problem? How long do they last? And if you charge them, how do you charge them? Yes, we have a battery that lasts for uh, nearly one week, and you can recharge it uh, with a micro USB uh, um, charger cable, like, like like any other device. And we also go to uh, goes to China uh, to work with uh, one uh, leader professional battery, battery provider and the name is Full River and with this uh, partner we work very close to design the battery now is the this is the final product and this is the battery inside the right arm can you just talk quickly about your uh, go to market because it's a really good idea but it's one that a lot of people will soon be competing with you so um, it seems to me that Part of your success has to be getting to the market very, very quickly. How do you plan to do that? We start one year and a half <coughs> designing the technology. This is the, our first production, <laughs> our first prototype. Uh, this is not wearable. This is like a cyborg. <laughs> and now this is the technology. Uh, we start to pre-sell yes. months ago at Indiegogo campaign. And we have pre-orders now. And we start the production two months ago in China for the batteries, in Europe for the, uh, for the front. Yes, the, the, the frame is going to be manufactured. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
you. Good job. So we have the next team, which is LightMap, uh, the motorcycle helmet, and we would like to invite the founders of LightMap to stage. Let's welcome them. Thank you, Dimitri. Welcome. Thank you. LiveMap presents the first in the world uh, motorbike helmet with built-in navigation system. Today, everyone uses GPS in cars, but not the riders. There is a reason, there is a reason for it. Being a rider myself, I know that GPS is dangerous on a bike. If you look down for directions, you are at high risk of accidents. Uh, pulling over a consulting and paper map is outdated and also leaves you open to roadside accidents. The military faced similar challenges with their fighter pilots, and they successfully found a solution uh, by showing navigation on micro displays in front of pilots' eyes. But this is not the option for our riders, because micro displays uh, can cause severe injury in case of a crash. A more advanced approach is beaming the navigation just on the face shield uh, in a F-35 helmet style, like they do it. We also beam navigation just on the face shield. And unlike other motorbike huts, uh, it is positioned in the center of your field of view. Uh, we just uh, take the basic principles of the military technology and uh, modify them for the civil application. Look, just the type of displayed information is different. Uh, here you see uh, what the directions uh, uh, will look like. Uh, the image is easy to read, transparent, uh, and you can easily see the surroundings. By the way, uh, the application is voice controlled and you can keep uh, your hands on the handlebar for your safety. Now a bit uh, specifications. Uh, the application is Android-based. We provide uh, maps for all countries of the world. The navigation is running on board, uh, but uh, the information subject to change, like voice, traffic, weather, uh, is downloaded over the LTE network. Uh, we are proud to say that we managed it, uh, uh, to make the optics and uh, electronics small enough to fit a regular uh, flip-up helmet. Uh, now, uh, by now, we spent $1 million for prototypes and design documentation and uh, looking for venture investments. Uh, we need about $5 million to, for tooling and uh, to start the serial, pro uh, serial production. Uh, much more information and lots of videos you can find if you visit our website. Just uh, type livemap.info and keep in touch with us. Thanks. Thank you. Um, I, I'm not entirely clear. So are you a hardware company? Are you making the helmets? Or are you a service company that's making you know, the maps? Are you a service company? Or are you a hardware company? Uh, we are a hardware company. And we are going to produce uh, the helmet as a whole thing, as integrated solution. Uh, and as uh, for maps, we will provide Navtech maps with f frequent updates. Uh, so, yep. is this the answer? Uh, sort of. So, what's the cost? So, what's the cost of the helmet? What do you think uh, you can get it to? We estimate uh, about uh, two thousand dollars. Now, pre-orders are open, and you can pre-order it at a much lower price. Uh, people say it's uh, a bit uh, too much, but uh, we always say uh, compare it uh, with a uh, price of a good uh, carbon, hub, uh, carbon fiber helmet plus uh, action camera, it will be built in, plus uh, navigator, and plus uh, a Bluetooth headset. We will have a Bluetooth headset functionality. And uh, combine this price and you will get more. What's the total market size that you're trying to go after? So if you're selling that many helmets, uh, how many can you sell? The market is very large, and uh, we estimate uh, the sales in the first year about uh, uh, 50, uh, uh, 50, 100, 000, uh, uh, 50, sorry, uh, about uh, 50,000 helmets uh, annually with growth. 
as the market is very large and people keep asking us uh, when it will be available on market. Uh, do you plan to license the technology to another? Uh, uh, we are not sure. Uh, people say why not to make uh, an uh, add-on device that will be can be attached to any helmet, but is, this is impossible because a good helmet that fits your head well has no extra space for even for your finger. So, but uh, uh, if you you, you, you cannot uh, attach uh, this uh, to any helmet, uh, we could license it, but we prefer to control all stages of uh, production and. Uh, to guarantee the best quality possible. That's why we you want to... We're not going to go direct to the market, yeah? yeah? So we want to, to produce it under our, our own brand, not to license it. Yeah. Uh, what markets have approved your technology and how are you planning uh, to get your technology passed in other legislations? Uh, you mean the certification? So uh, we know that there are several rules, rules for certification for DOT in, uh, in the USA and other standards. Uh, we know how to distribute all the hardware uh, over the helmet uh, in, in such a way. This is our know-how. Uh, thus, uh, it uh, will not uh, decrease the safety in case of an impact. Uh, no, I'm, no, I'm talking especially the legislation to be able to drive with that. Sorry? the legislation to be able to use it for driving. Yeah, it will be certified by all means. So it will be certi certified for every market. So we, without crash, uh, crash tests, we cannot go to the market and we can also, uh, cannot sell the item. If we didn't know how to do it, we wouldn't start. So Thank you. It will be safe. So now it's time to travel to Switzerland. So the next company is called Quip. Uh, organize everything that you have. Stefan, thank you so much. Thank you, Rich. Welcome. Hi there. Let me tell you an interesting story about me and my e-bike. When I bought that e-bike, I embarked on a long journey. Many things can happen during the life cycle of such a bike. And Probably you expect me now to tell you about that magic button that uh, comes from the Internet of Things and will connect the e-bike to me and deliver all the services. I'm not going to, to talk about that. For one reason, 99.4% of all things today are not connected. And even though the Internet of Things is a real bus today, we opt for the 99.4% and we were thinking about how can we equip services on the things that are not connected today. We've invented a technology we call the social network of things, which is a patented technology too. And it makes it extremely simple to create a digital identity for each and anything you care about and to equip it subsequently with all the services, post-purchase services you like. We found out that this is very interesting for end consumers. But not only for the end consumers. We talked to manufacturers, for example, to this one, and he said, we, tell, we said to him, hey, you make a great bike. Why don't you ship it with services? And he said, yeah, that's very nice. So during a 12 months test phase, we just uh, finished now, we accumulated quite a number of uh, interesting and amazing ratios. You see some of them here. We decided to launch Quip two weeks ago. And to go for more manufacturers, here you see a list of manufacturers we are talking about right now. And these are only sports and outdoor equipment manufacturers. Though Quip, of course, applies for all non-FMCG products. We are definitely set up to scale globally, of course, with our social network of things. We want to develop price plans, we want to develop like self-service functionalities, functionalities, how you know it from um, Zendesk, for example. Um, we're going to integrate with other systems providers. We're also going to develop some smart tags, of course, and launch an open service market API in the next year. Two words about an exit strategy. No, two words about uh, the company. Has been funded by three friends who all run their own businesses we put together the best of our team and we use the whole resources from our research background and from the Swiss Accelerator. 
two words about the exit strategy. There are many, many plans to exit, but uh, one thing is for sure, some big names here are doing a race for shopping right now, and we are quite complementary with the services we are offering. It's not so important. The most important thing for the moment is that you get the experience on how to equip a thing with a digital identity. And I brought you some quip labels, so just try it out and create your first digital identity for one of the things you really care about. Thanks. I mostly invest in teams. I would like, I mean, I'm very impressed with your team, but who's on your advisory board? On the advisory board? Yes. Um, it's, it's, it's a very small advisory board. It's Elga Fleisch, who is the, uh, the main um, research seat at GS1. Um, GS1 is the global barcode standardization organization, which give us, gives us access to all the manufacturers and me for the moment. We're self-financed so far. I mean, we funded some companies before and we, uh, yeah, I have some pocket money, so up to here, we just came on our own. It's going to change, that's for sure. <laughs> Why QR codes? Uh, it's, it's not focused on QR codes. Um, we are technology independent. We have some Bluetooth low energy devices right now. Um, some of the best results we generated with simple order cards. So we just put a paper card onto a bicycle and he said, okay, why don't you check in? You get, get one service for free. That's the game, service for free um, to check in. And the manufacturers do because they get access to their customers, of course. They don't know their customers today. So it, does it require that everything that you tag has, at least in this first phase, that you have a relationship with the brands? Like the brands that you no, showed us No, it's not before? necessary. Okay. We have like, it's like a dual business model. We do have our B2C client, which is the green world you see if you go to www.quip.com. And we do have a B2B2C model, which is a white label client. Yeah, so um, the, the one thing I learned a little bit here in the back. Yeah. Um, you know, in the last years of entrepreneurship and venture capital is to focus. Uh, and, and I wasn't too sure about what your real focus is because you yeah. said marketplace, um, then the community, then, you know, so. Yeah, yeah you're absolutely right. And that's, a, that's an issue we're well aware. Um, we just wanted to draw you the big picture. Um, if you want to go for a global scaling startup, um, it's good to have the, the big picture and uh, we think that it, it has many potentials to scale up. What we do right now is just we're focusing on one group of uh, um, uh, goods and also on a simple set of uh, services first and we're going to test through. So this year is still a testing year, even though we've launched, we want to understand, okay, what is the most uh, interesting service for people in what kind of product and from there we're going to grow. more questions? Um, so besides exit, if you look out five years, can you just paint for me what is the success for your business? What, is, what are you going to do? What we are going to do? Yeah, how what we are going to generate as value, you, you want to say? Like how many, how many of these devices, how many types of services? <laughs> Tell me what it is yeah. you're going to do with this. <laughs> yeah, it's, it, it, <laughs> Again, a very good question. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm very much in the, in the lean startup and agile development, so we take it step by step. Per personally, I think the, the horizon is very big, but I don't know right now if we're going to end up in one category of products or if we're really going to be very broad uh, service. But the, the, the goal is clear. I mean, we want to go for thousands of manufacturers with hundreds and millions, hundreds of thousands and millions of cu customers of these manufacturers. That would be the growth plan. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We're excited about our next team, which is Recommend. Uh, it's a platform where you can find advice customized for you and expert solutions online. Thank you. The yours, Nicola. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Well, one year ago, I went to New York. It was a nightmare to find a nice hotel. And after spending hours of looking into reviews from strangers or throughout Google, I ended up in a shitty and expensive hotel. 
Next year, this year, I went back to New York and I used Recommend's website, so I found recommendations from people I trust, and in less than five minutes, I actually picked up the right hotel and my whole travel went well. Once I was in New York, I used Recommend's mobile app and I could find recommendations from people I trust around me for all the things I wanted to do. I could also use the mobile app to do my own recommendations as a memory. I could ask for recommendations to uh, uh, some friends or even experts, and my whole experience changed. So basically, that's the problem we are solving, is to save time making better choices in your life. We use recommendations not only for hotels and restaurants, we use actually for many things all day long, also for books, mobile apps, or wine bottle, for instance. They all have one common thing, is the best response is from people you trust, and there's no place to gather that together. We have decided to focus on three major pillars. One is to get the right recommendations directly to you. Secondly, it's quality over quantity. Get rid of social noise in general to focus on recommendations only. Thirdly, it's social rewarding. It's the trigger of the thank you which is missing when you give a recommendation to somebody because it's useful only a few months afterwards. About the market, basically word of mouth has been the best advertising tool of all, of all times and these figures show again that they're way above any type of other uh, uh, point of entry, like Google for instance, which here matches only 25% trust, or normal advertising only 9%. The point of entry of recommendations of people you trust is the major point to any type of consumption. So our market is the all uh, advertising market of the world. Uh, last but not least, uh, three bullet points why we are very different from any existing uh, websites on recommendations right now. First of all, we use uh, a latest technology by a startup which is called Importio. We adapt it to recommend, which enables us to gather and connect uh, experts and professional websites recommendation which already exists on the web. So we are now building this since one year, and I'm pretty happy to announce that we will release in a few weeks from now, going from 10,000 to 100,000 recommendations. Again, very qualified experts on all sorts of topics. Secondly, uh, we are not a city guide or some kind of vertical. We do all types of recommendations, so the tool you can use it many times a day so it becomes more viral. And thirdly, we have built it as a social network so that uh, it's based on, um, uh, on uh, your relationship and on uh, uh, basically it's an algorithm based on the trust and relationship. But that, that was it. Thank you. And just <coughs> to understand a little bit more. Uh, you have your own content or you are aggregating content for, from other sites? We do both. Um, we basically aggregating content which already exists on the, uh, the web through that technology, uh, which is very important for the first user experience. So this is basically experts or any types of professional content. Uh, it can be Golf Digest if you're a golfer or a wine club or things like that. And then it's user-generated content because it's built as a social network, so interacting between users. Okay. Um, how do you plan to compete with Facebook? Uh, have you thought about Facebook as a potential threat for your business? Because uh, with Facebook you have friends you can, you can trust? It's recommendations is on the agenda of Facebook definitely, probably uh, in a few years from now. Uh, we consider they treat information very differently, that it has to be on recommendations. This is why you can't find any real uh, useful recommendations when you do a search on Facebook for a very simple reason. It's uh, spread and drowned in the mass of information and it's not qualified. Recommendations work exactly at the opposite of, of a normal social feed, which is like only for 24 hours. Recommendations are useful in time. So if you focus on recommendations, you do very qualified, organized information on different topics, places, and things like that. So this is what we do. Congratulations, very good presentation. Thank you. Uh, one question, what's your exit strategy? If you've thought about uh, it already. I think it's too early to talk about exit strategy. Of course, uh, a recommend which works and becomes like a major player in that field would be a very big appetite for anybody, for, for Facebook, Google, or whatever bigger company or media company in general. 
so typically, you have uh, recommendation engines that are separate from the application um, or, an, or verticalized, like you mentioned, say Netflix for movies, yes. Yelp for, for uh, reviews. There have been companies who tried to merge them, and they have not been successful because there wasn't enough of a hook, say, for, like in the case of Ditto, it, it required too much effort on the, the part of the people you were asking for recommendations for. How do you deal with that? How do you make that seamless? It's, it's exactly the way we build Recommend, is as a social network and not a crowdsourced tool. Uh, basically, what these websites do, they focus on the product and crowdsource because then you don't, uh, you don't have enough sparsity, enough information. We do exactly the other way. We, co we focus on the relationship, on the social network of things, and particularly on the thank you. We have like everything is by relevance and about. The thing is you want to share what you know and tell people, and people can give you uh, points and relevant points, and you can be recognized about it. So it's built totally differently, and this is why it's, to it's, it's cross-boarding all that uh, different applications. So we're not a vertical at all. It's not crowdsourced. We don't want crowdsourcing, actually. We don't want to read reviews from strangers. <laughs> Another one from the public. <coughs> Bonjour. Yes. Uh, for the time being, your recommendation is on tourism sector, but are you planning No, I took to that as an example, uh, but I also talked about it's about anything, and that is very important, because if you do something only about tourism, you come back to the vertical, to crowdsourcing, because you're never going to get the virality. We are building a tool you will use 10 times a day, because uh, maybe you need it for lunch for a restaurant, but then you, you share, oh, the latest mobile app, or you want to buy a nice present for your wife, or the wine bottle, or the babysitter, which which is recommended. We actually use recommendations all our life uh, with our network all day. So it's built really to be used all the time by any type of service. And it's by topic and by places. And m m sorry, m the question was, it's already working all over the world or and all other sectors? Or it just all, all, all sectors in all world. I think it's already. international by definition. Already working? Yes, it's already working, yes. Thank, <laughs> Thank you, you so much. much. Thank you. So now, you had one minute more, so we penalize you. So um, now it's time for the last company. Uh, they're coming from London, and the company, the name of the company is Me. So come here, come to the States. Uh, they're using uh, educational tools for, through, uh, to Africa through SMS. So welcome. Thank you. Is it um, working? Bring one. Yep. Oh, yeah, it's working. Awesome. Hi, everyone. I'm Chris, the CEO of Stereo.me. We developed a process called Learning Out Loud, which reinforces learning through an SMS-triggered voice call directly to any type of mobile phone, regardless of internet or smartphone capabilities. This is how it works. Robin right now is sending a text message to Stereo.me, and in a minute, we'll receive a phone call back with an interactive voice lesson. Teachers can either select their own lesson from the marketplace, or they can record their own lesson via our tool. These lessons will be in line with national curriculum so that teachers can actually replace their traditional homework processes using the Stereo.me technology. This is the call. Could you please put it on the audio jack? All right. Um, some people can actually hear it right now. We were told we were going to have some audio, but um, basically what happens is the learner gets a call back, they pick up the phone, and on the call they hear first an introduction by Stereo.me, asking them if they'd like to start a lesson or if they'd like to be explained how the process works. They click one and their lesson starts. Straight away what happens is the the, the, they hear their teacher's voice and the teacher asks them a question. This can be multiple choice or an open-ended question. If it's a multiple choice question, they answer via typing one to five on the keypad. And if it's an open-ended question, they just simply talk into the phone, we record the audio that they speak, uh, and we give this as part of a progress report afterwards to the teacher. By doing this, we automate the homework process and therefore save the teacher a lot of time. In Africa, there's a lot of problems in education. One of the main problems is that African learners lack accessibility to many types of learning due to the cost of smartphones, the cost of data, the cost of traditional learning methods. Current solutions leave a gap. Teachers lack time. This is because in many African countries, the average elementary school class is between 40 and 80 students, within some countries actually even 120 students per teacher being the norm. 
Therefore, from our research, we found that teachers spend between 10 and 20 hours a week simply on marking homework. By automating the homework process, we save African teachers time. And by providing them with more insights into which questions their learners provide, do right or wrong, what, what time their learners do the homework, etc., we help teachers discover learning gaps, as well as we help teachers to shape their educational plans and to basically improve the education they provide. We have a proven founding team. Dean and Danielle, my co-founders, are serial entrepreneurs with existing experience in audio technology. We have an amazing advisory board comprising of technology experts from Africa, Mr. Oluok, who is a teacher union official, and Mr. Mbando, who is a former director of Ministry of Education in Tanzania. We have already confirmed three pilots in Nigeria, Tanzania, and Lesotho. Thank you for staring at me. Uh, has any student tried already the, your solution? Because uh, you, you mentioned that uh, there are pilots confirmed, but have they been implemented? Uh, we haven't actually tried our solution yet in a live school environment, but we've already been in talks with students as well as teachers in order to build our technology. Like, they're, they're very central to our technology process. Okay, thanks. I'll ask the VC question. So who pays for the SMS and what's your business model? Yes. Um, we don't charge the learner for the SMS. We use a short code, so we actually take the cost of the SMS that goes inbound to us, and then we also pay for the call that's outbound. Uh, we monetize via value add messaging. So every 10 minute lesson contains 30 seconds that an, a brand could use for brand recognition campaigns uh, or other types of advertisers could use. Yeah. Any other questions? So how about, so, Sorry. How, so you're, gonna advertise to, you're gonna advertise to children. And have you tested that with you know, educational uh, ministers and such in your advisory board? Have you gotten advice that that's something that's acceptable to them? Yes. Um, so far, we've only seen positive responses because the types of advertising that, that we would like on our platform will, of course, be you know, relevant and, and um, th there will be some limits in, in what we advertise to children. For example, we won't actually advertise religious uh, messages that, that could be uh, conflict-inspiring. We won't be uh, advertising for alcohol products, etc. cetera. Um, but overall, there's a very clear understanding that someone has to pay for this educational tool happening. African governments are able to pay sometimes, but not always willing to pay, um, or their payment process is, is a very difficult one. Uh, the learners themselves can't pay often, and the teachers definitely can't pay. Um, therefore, every party that we've spoken to so far is happy with us using brand recognition campaigns as a financing tool. Yeah. In Africa, there is a lot of <clears throat> uh, country where NGOs are taking care about education. Did you plan to work, to collaborate with big NGOs working on education in yes. Africa? Or, and the second question is, do you want to do it also in South America or Asia, or are you only focusing in, in Africa? So initially, we're focused, uh, starting with the second question, uh, on sub-Saharan Africa. This is mainly because uh, our team is English-speaking, um, and in, in South America, we, we need to be Spanish or Portuguese-speaking. Um, but also because we started on Startup Us Africa, which is a project I organized back in November. Uh, so our connections are strongest in sub-Saharan Africa. We've had very good reception there. Uh, we are working with local NGOs. For example, in Nigeria, our pilot is set up with an NGO that manages 70 schools, and in Zimbabwe, we have had already an approval from an NGO that works with 3,000 schools. Um, so yes, we, we do work with NGOs. Yeah. Another question? Or? Sorry. Thank you so much. Thank you, Thank you so you. much. So now you saw 10 awesome companies from uh, different places, so 10 different cities, uh, a lot of countries. Hope you're excited. Now it's time to vote. So uh, judges, you can follow uh, Josep that is here, and let's go to decide who's going to be the winner. So thanks so much, and reminder, 
remember <laughs> that out of 450 applications, we had 192 valid applications. Out of those, we chose 10 finalists. And tomorrow, we'll be announcing the winner that we find to be the most disruptive and potentially successful in four years from now. 7 PM tomorrow here, we sure. have a date. Thank you so much for all the judges. Bye. Thank you.